Hi, good morning, Rex. Good morning, Thank Alicina. you for your time and for being Welcome. here. All of us at ISKI are very excited to have A4Q design thinking in our portfolio, mm -hmm. and then RBCS will be taking and, and giving the first courses. Yes. Um, what are the most important facts about it? Well, uh, I think uh, one key fact is that it's uh, very practical, that people should show up and expect to not just hear about design thinking, but to do some design thinking. That before they leave, they will have uh, hands-on experience with the uh, design for growth uh, techniques mm -hmm. and uh, be able to take that back to their work and put it into practice. Okay. The design thinking certification and mm -hmm. course uh -huh. aim to support organizations with the skills to use design thinking for real business benefit. Mm -hmm. Do you have an example for that? It really could be anything. It could be designing a mobile app, it could be designing the layout of a restaurant, it could mm -hmm. be designing a special kind of box to put in your briefcase to organize all your cords and electronic stuff. Which roles and departments within our organization mm -hmm. can benefit from design thinking course? Wow, uh, it could be anyone from uh, people in marketing to course developers to testers to uh, product owners and product managers, uh, other kinds of business stakeholders, uh, system architects, uh, really anybody who needs to try to think uh, innovatively, creatively about problems that they're trying to solve can uh, benefit from taking the course. Do you think um, design thinking course is only aimed for IT people or can we all uh, take it? Uh, absolutely not just for IT people, it's for anybody. Anyone who needs to apply creative uh, problem solving and innovation skills in their workplace can benefit from this. So Rex, design thinking mm -hmm. is theory alone, but also has very practical uses. Yeah, yeah. And how will this be addressed during the course? It will be addressed through what we've tried to do with the other courses, which is to have an approximately equal mixture of lecture and examples and demonstrations and hands-on exercises. Mm -hmm. So people should come not just to hear about design thinking, but to see examples of design thinking and then to use design thinking principles hands-on in uh, practical exercises during the course. And to work using design to, thinking. They, they should absolutely work, yes. Anybody who shows up thinking they're just going to sit there, listen, <laughs> and take an exam, they're not, that's not what the course is going about. It's, it's not for them. It's for people who want to come and actually practice design thinking. We, we know that design thinking has been uh, successfully uh, deployed by major organizations. Oh, yeah. But is it is design thinking something for all organizations of different sizes? How, how do you think it works? Oh, sure, yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're a small startup company and you need to come up with innovative ideas and uh, maybe you started with a good idea and it was you know, two people in a garage, but now you've grown a little bit and you're trying to get that spark going again, then this can be a, a good way of doing that, of uh, getting, getting this course and running people through it and, and uh, opening their minds to uh, new ways of innovating and, and new kinds of ideas. Rex, uh, another product that has been added to the ISQI and A4Q portfolio mm -hmm. uh, was the Selenium yeah. uh, course. Uh, why is Selenium WebDriver so important? Well, it's just incredibly dominant um, graphical user interface test automation tool right now. Um, really, if, if you're doing graphical user interface test automation, primarily through a browser, but also through other interfaces, and even non-browser types of interfaces, there are, there are drivers available, uh, you're probably either using it or considering using it. So it's something that really anybody who's involved in automation through a graphical user interface ought to know. I've heard this question a lot. With people who use Java, um, they ask me, okay, but this uh, this course uses mainly Python. Yeah. So yeah. is it is this course actually for them, and why was this decision made to use Python? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely applicable for anybody, regardless of the language they're using. Uh, we chose to use Python uh, for a couple reasons. One is that Python is the fastest growing and largest language, mm -hmm. uh, according to Stack Overflow at this time. Uh, it has overtaken and surpassed Java. Okay. Uh, another thing that's important to understand is that Java is a full-blown object-oriented programming language. And for those people who are object-oriented programmers, C++ or, or uh, Java or C-sharp, they may not have a problem with uh, using Java in the class, but 
Somebody who has limited programming experience is going to find Python, which is a simple scripting language, much more easy to understand and use, even if they don't have Python experience. Okay. So any Java programmer will know how to, how to understand mm -hmm. and use Python, but the other way around, somebody who has basic scripting knowledge but doesn't know object-oriented programming would not be able to use Java. So we did this to make the course more accessible to a greater number of people, yeah. uh, lower the, the entry uh, uh, level, if you will, and also to be aligned with, as I said, the, the most popular and fastest growing programming language in the world. So Rex, uh, mm -hmm. what specifically do participants learn when they take the RBCS Selenium course? They should expect to show up and hear an equal mixture of lecture where the uh, important concepts of the use of uh, Selenium was explained, mm -hmm. and uh, also test automation, not just Selenium test automation, but just test automation in general. And then they'll see examples of those concepts being applied uh, using Selenium code, um, and then they will do hands-on exercises. And so it's an equal mix of those three things, lecture, example, and exercise, and people will come in and uh, apply the techniques that they learn and leave able to go back to their work and immediately start producing and maintaining uh, Selenium test automation. How do you think the certification will help improve the, the career path of a professional? Well, um, a couple ways. One is that somebody may have been doing Selenium for a while, but they're, they may be self-taught. And mm -hmm. one of the things that typically happens when you teach yourself is that you, you don't know what you don't know. So you have blind spots that are in important areas, but you're not able to really see that you have that blind spot. Mm -hmm. So the training will address those areas and make sure that people leave a more well-rounded Selenium test automation professional. And for those people who take the training and then take the exam and pass the exam, they'll be able to actually demonstrate that they have those skills. And that can be really important, especially for somebody who's looking to break into that mm -hmm. line of work. It, Somebody who um, is already doing it uh, may say, well, I have on my resume, you know, I've, I've done this for a while. But somebody who wants to establish themselves in this very hot market uh, may find that the certification is a good way of opening doors for them that wouldn't otherwise be open. So it's both for experience and also for starters, I would say. A absolutely. It can be done by people who have a few years of experience and want to round out their knowledge mm -hmm. and also by people who are coming in and whether somebody's brand new to the field or has experience, if they want to have that certification to prove that they've actually mastered the core concepts, then this is a perfect uh, vehicle for that. And this certification is valid internationally? It is valid internationally, absolutely. Yes, there are exam centers around the world. The training is going to be offered, uh, we, we expect, everywhere. So Rex, uh, what is the value of this syllabus uh, for Selenium that's now available for everyone in the, in the community? Yeah. Well, when we set out to write the syllabus initially, one of the things that we discovered is that there's a real absence of uh, widely available, up-to-date, comprehensive references. And so when we wrote the syllabus, we set out to make it a repository of the, the latest thinking. Uh, and to be detailed enough that when somebody reads it, they're not just reading about what's important about Selenium, but they're actually seeing what's important about Selenium laid out in the syllabus itself. So that makes the syllabus probably one of the most comprehensive, up-to-date references on Selenium WebDriver that's freely available on the internet today. Yeah, I think that's important to point out. Everyone can download it, it's yep. for free, and mm -hmm. you can actually use it and learn from it. Yep, absolutely. It's a useful resource for the entire software testing community, especially people who are involved in uh, Selenium automation or any form of test automation through a graphical user interface. So Rex, yes. we are here in Berlin. Yeah. We are recording this while the ICQB GA or General Assembly takes place. Mm -hmm. Why do you think this program is so important? When I first got involved in around 2003, um, there really wasn't a consensus on what the best practices of software testing uh, are. Mm -hmm. uh, there were contending certifications, but there wasn't agreement among them and on those best practices and how to apply them. And the overall number of certificate holders was pretty low. And in the last 15 years, um, 
the ISDQB program has become not just the dominant software testing certification, which it certainly is, head and shoulders above the competitors that existed at the time mm -hmm. when it came about, but actually the number three certification in the world right after PMI and ITIL. So that gives you a sense of how important this is. And we've managed to expose well over a half a million people to the various best practices that we've documented in the syllabi or bodies of knowledge, if you prefer, that we put together. And those are, of course, freely available to the entire software testing world. And uh, we think that that uh, in itself has been a, in a great service in advancing and uh, uh, promoting the use of testing best practices across the world uh, for all software developers and all software testers. And as a former president of yes. the ISTQV, <laughs> uh, yes. um, can you um, tell us in simple words what actually happens in a TA meeting without disclosing anything? Oh, of course, yeah. Well, it's you know we we have reports from the various working groups and we mm -hmm. have reports from the executives, uh, and um, we discuss important issues and make decisions that set the policy for the ISTQV uh, going forward. And it's a very democratic institution. Every uh, member board has one vote. Mm -hmm. and uh, decisions are made and uh, by the GA and then carried out by the working groups and the executives. Uh, Rex, I get this question a lot mm -hmm. and I like to ask it uh, to people who have lots of experience and especially for uh, for people who are coming uh, into the IT world and into testing, um, what's uh, your personal experience? Why did you decide to become a software tester and developer? So I went to UCLA to get an engineering degree mm -hmm. and at first I thought I was going to do a more typical kind of engineering and then I took a uh, computer science class in my freshman year and was like, oh wow, this is really interesting. I can tell a machine what to do and it will do it. <laughs> and so I got a computer science degree and I financed that degree by working as a programmer in parallel with that. Um, and then um, I got uh, an opportunity to apply that programming knowledge uh, a few years into my career to automate tests. And so I started doing test automation and um, have been doing, been involved in test automation uh, really ever since. So that would have been like the uh, late 1980s. Um, and then say, expanded to you know, do management of, of testing and so forth, including managing very large testing uh, teams and organizations, and uh, really been in the been in that that special area of software development uh, most of my career. Okay, thank you so um, much for taking your time uh, to do this. Well, thank you. And uh, yeah, and of course, um, we will continue to do this interview with professionals. So if you have any questions for us, uh, if you want to ask them, then please send us all your questions.